Welcome back to Tech Sag, sponsored by the Twelfth Man Foundation. I'm Billy Lucci. He is Connor Wigman. Yes, sir. Good to see you back, it's buddy. It's you. been it's been a few weeks. It has, yes, sir. How you doing? First of all, like how how are you uh, how are you feeling in, in your where are you at in your recovery? Like what what are the next couple steps? I guess we'd say I'm good. I mean, it's moving along pretty well. I got out the splint two and a half weeks ago, mm-hmm. and then I got the hard cast on right now, which I get out get out of it on Wednesday, and we're able to start doing mobility and some some range of motion stuff with the ankle. So I'm excited about that. We we were just talking and I was saying it, you know, as a quarterback or any kind of competitive athlete, I can't imagine, you know, what you went through there. We were talking about your recovery schedule and I, it kind of dawned on me that in some weird way, like the last thing you ever want to hear as an athlete is your season's over. Mm-hmm. But there could also have been a situation where you're, you know, fighting with the training staff and with your own mind to try to race back and speed up that recovery. Is there some, once it sets in at like, Hey, my year's done where it's like, good. Now I can just do what the doctors say and just be on a normal path of recovery. And I don't have to, you know, get antsy about it. I mean, yeah, that's the most important thing. Like guess the trainers try and put through my head that we got to do every little thing, Mm -hmm. the doctor, what they say and exactly how they say it. And just, Taking a day at a time has is, is, is been helping me a lot through it all. And I know how tough that had to be because I know how much you love. It's not just football, but the lock. You know, yeah, the and huddle, I being around my teammates, that's been the hardest part. And it has been nice now. to get back out oh, there. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. Right just Saturday being out there for the first time again, it, mm-hmm. it was it was cool. What, uh, what kind of conversations have you had since then with Max in terms of just kind of however ways you can help being, being sidelined? I mean, I've been kind of out of the loop for a little bit, but as I've started getting back in, I'm just there and supporting him in any yeah. way possible and anything he needs, I got him. And just he need, like literally anything, I'm supporting him on the sidelines all through the games. I'm out there. We I go and lift for the first half of practice, mm-hmm. and then I go back out to end okay. practice. And so I'm always around, and it's just been cool to see how the he's he's got the guys going good right now, especially how? after the bye week. Yeah, that that bye week seemed to have come at kind of the perfect time. A couple of close losses, and then to come out and kind of handle business against an SC. How important is it for a team in a locker room? Because you're young, but you've already been a part of that. To kind of, you know, shake that loss mentally. Like, it, it is it easier than we think from where we sit, or is it harder? Because, like, to me, it seems like you guys have a different perspective. Because maybe it's just once you're out practicing. It's just back to business as usual, or is it something that's like, no, when, when you start losing, it, it, it gets harder and harder to break out of that funk? I wouldn't say that. I feel like you got to put it behind you. Mm-hmm. I mean, you watch the film from that game the next day, and then it's on to the next team you play. Like, you can't be, I mean, you can obviously put a chip on your shoulder, go out there and try and practice harder in ways you didn't be more productive than you were the week before, but mm-hmm. you got to put it behind you and start focusing on the team and preparing for the team you're playing uh, that week. Are you looking forward to these next few weeks in terms of not only what's ahead for the team and some big SEC games, but just to kind of watch? I mean, it, I think I feel like it would be different for you to watch last year because you and I had talked, and I know how antsy you were and ready to get out there and play. Do you think now that you started, <clears throat> well, I guess essentially, you know, almost a whole season, eight, what was it, eight games or so, you start that much? Do you feel like now you're looking forward to kind of watching it and, and or will you be taking it in maybe from a different perspective than you did like last year while you were waiting your turn? I mean, for sure. Like, I'm, like I've talked to a bunch of coaches and they just tell me like their past experiences from when they played, when they were hurt mm-hmm. and just saying, learning the game from not just the quarterback position, but every position and knowing yeah. what everybody's doing on the field at all times and mm-hmm. getting better with coverages, fronts, splitters and all that. And I feel like I've been doing that. What, um, have you had a chance just to kind of mentally take a little check? Like during the bye week, were you able to say, okay, I went through this. It, it You know, it's the last thing I wanted, but I'm going to have some enjoyment outside of rehabbing this injury. I mean, yeah, for sure. You got to – I mean, like I've talked to Max Wright. He sat me down for a while just because uh-huh. of all the injuries he had and mm-hmm. just said, yeah, you got to get your mind off football for a little bit. Like, it's going to suck for a while. But, <coughs> like, when you're able to start doing rehab and treatment, like, tackle it head on. And I'm ready to do that starting Wednesday. And you, you've gotten some hunting in at least? Oh, yeah, for sure. Right. A little during the bye week. How did it go? It went well. 
shot I shot a buck. So okay. it was it was fun. It was a fun little weekend yeah. with my buddies and my dad. We I get, I was gonna say don't get used to that in the fall, but you do no, have a no. bye week every year, so you'll be able to you'll be able yeah. to get those in. Definitely won't get used to it in the fall. But. <laughs> Um, speaking of fall, have you watched any football, or have you just been like, now nope, I'm gonna? I watched a little bit, but it, it, it is kind of tough to watch right now. But. I was gonna ask you, maybe you can't answer this, maybe you can. Any quarterbacks around the country that you're watching right now that that, that in this particular season where you're like, now I'm really impressed with what he's doing. I like the uh, two of the quarterbacks from uh, Oregon and uh, Washington, Bunnings yeah. and Michael Penix. Mm-hmm. That game that they had the other week, that was a really good game, and then. Oregon yeah. went and put a whooping on Utah in Utah yesterday. So, Oregon's pretty interesting mm-hmm. to me because, or those two teams, because I, I don't think either one of them is going to lose. Me either. So when they play, uh, I guess when they play each other again, like I, that Pac-12, th- those two are interesting to me. A lot of those Pac-12 teams over the years, it's not there's not like a great level of physicality no, lately, it's but they run have and gun and. Yeah, the ball outside and let the receivers go make plays. Bo Nix is pretty fascinating. I feel like he's been playing since. Oh uh, no, I feel like high. exactly. I feel like I was in eighth grade watching him play at Auburn. Yeah, I mean he's played A and M like three times. I think I'm at least twice, and I think three times. I remember I was a, watching. He was playing here. I, I was as a recruit. I was watching him yeah, play. Mm-hmm. That's right. That was y'all's recruiting class. He was. Um, how how's the uh, you we you and I talked a lot about this team's chemistry and culture, and I thought. Saturday was a good example of it. I said before, after Tennessee, I saw a really frustrated team. I didn't see a team that that had given up hope. I didn't see a team that was infighting. I just saw a frustrated team that had just laid it out there. They're playing hard. I was happy to see them come out and bounce back Mm -hmm. yesterday the way they did. You know, two touchdown win over SEC team. And it wasn't easy at first, and they hung in. Is that the feel you've got right now? Is that this team feels like there's still a lot out in front of it? Oh yeah, and like the frustrating part is probably just because like we know what we can do, and we know what we're capable of, we know what we have inside this locker room, and we just got to go out there and show it. Yeah. And we got a really good football team, and like I said, we got to go show it. We got to put in a good week of practice each and every week, and then go do it on Saturday. I want to ask you about a couple of your teammates here, one on each side of the ball, because you, you mentioned Max talking to you, and another guy that thinks been showing great leadership this year is uh, Anaya Smith. Oh, yeah. And the game he had yesterday, I know he's been real vocal these last couple weeks, but really for the last month or so, mm-hmm. he's been he's been on one. What is it that – you're, you're a quarterback that gets him the ball. What is it about Anaya that makes him so, so special? I mean, the respect I have for that guy, I mean, just he shows up each and every day, no matter if he's banged up, bruised, battered. He's going to be out there practicing no matter what. He can have a little limp, but he's going to have his pads on, his helmet yeah. on. He's going to practice every day. I haven't seen him miss a practice rather than when he got hurt last year. But mm-hmm. that just, I mean, seeing that as a younger guy and as a leader of a team, that's huge. And then defensively, uh Edger and Cooper. Oh, yeah. hey, actually, I'm going to ask you about two guys. because I saw him today in the locker room. I was like, you're so, you're so cold, bro. <laughs> that dude's crazy. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't the, – the, the screen play where he slipped between three blockers, oh, my God. I mean, that, and, and just takes oh, the guy's ankle. That was unbelievable. And he – just every game, every week. And it's one thing – I think he's playing at like a first team all SEC oh, yeah. level, if not higher. Like people on the I don't the think there's anyone better team. at him in, at that position in the country right now. He had a nice junior year. This is this. He had a nice year last year. This is different. Did you see this coming during camp, during the off season, or is this even surprise you guys? No, I mean, he's the same way as a zero. I mean, day in day out, no matter how he's feeling, he's going to be there and ready to practice. And just his athleticism at that position. And when I noticed more of it when he was coverage in coverage, like when we were in seven on seven and mm-hmm. doing some pass pass uh, periods, but. Yeah, he's he's good at everything. There's nothing he can't do. Along those same lines, Bryce Anderson, your classmate. Oh, that's my guy. Yesterday, I thought he was, I thought he was nice. Same against Bama. Um, what does he mean to this team? A lot. I mean, you know what he's going to go out there and do. His consistency level is at a very high level, and you know he's reliable. You don't got to worry about that position that he's playing. And he goes out and makes plays at a, a very high rate. I, 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 no one brings this up because it's just, you know, it doesn't – I feel like sometimes it doesn't fit. You know, you lose a game and it's 
a and played the whole second half against Tennessee. The whole game without Bryce and the whole second half without Bryce and, uh, and Edge out there. And I'm, I'm sitting here as we're talking about those two guys going, man, I can't help but wonder how that could have gone with mm-hmm. those two because the defense was had a great game anyway. Mm-hmm. You played half the game with, I think, two of the most disruptive guys, not just on the A&M defense, but I think around, the, around this league right now. I'm going to ask you this about the defense because they, they've been getting after quarterback so much these last few weeks. I mean, they've been making life miserable. All those – forget Edge because he's fast mm-hmm. and he can fly. All them D linemen, if you're playing quarterback and and which is the one that's going to be the hardest for you to escape or who, who's the one guy you don't want to see coming at you when you drop back and you look up and you see that Aggie D lineman coming at you? Probably Shamar Turner. He'll, he'll, he'll just start barking at you <laughs> as he's running Does after he really? you. Yeah. He has fun like no, that. he's funny. He's... Mm-hmm. I give him a hard time, too, because I'm in a green jersey. Yeah. They can't touch You're me. Like, so. hands <laughs> off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank God, right? Yes, sir. Hey, Connor, I know, uh, you know, this isn't your most fun time, but I hope everything outside of football is going good, and I appreciate you coming in. No, sir, I appreciate you. You know that means a lot, so – We'll be keeping up, and then we'll talk in a few weeks about. Perfect. You'll be able to walk in here. Yeah, See, oh, y'all yeah. Don't know. I'm scooted, waiting for that day. He scooted in here. Yeah, and I, I got made my a, scooter over here, and I made the <laughs> comment of, I said, "You ready to roll?" And I did not mean that. As a joke. <laughs> Him and Brawny didn't catch that one. I did. I was like, "Oh, bad choice of words." No, that's all good. I know. I know. You got a good sense of humor yes, about sir. it, and we're looking forward to seeing you back this spring. Appreciate it. All right, man. He's Connor Wigman. I'm Billy Lucci. This is Tex Ags, brought to you by Twelfth Man Foundation. This interview is sponsored by the 12th Man Foundation. The 12th Man Foundation is the official source for Texas A&M athletics tickets.